to have that respect for the artist um, and what they go through for humanity, but also the voice of humanity itself and connecting us. Because right now, it, you know, it's oh, it's needed so much um, for us to take away all the distraction and bring us back to a whole again. Today's episode is sponsored by HEB Curbside and Delivery. When life throws you a loop, HEB Curbside and Delivery is here to help. We shop how you shop, so you get exactly what you want. Order today at HEB.com. HEB Curbside and Delivery, it's never been easier to shop HEB. I'm very excited about our guest this week on Our Voices Matter. We recently met at a social event here in Houston where he had an art installation that was just amazing. And the more we talked and I got a chance to understand what his whole philosophy is about purpose and humanity, I thought you're the perfect person to have on Our Voices Matter. So please welcome Justin Garcia to Our Voices Matter. And Justin, it is a pleasure to have this opportunity to get to know you and to talk about your art. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. I mean, yeah, we connected and it was just like, okay, this is, yeah, purpose and something bigger. Yeah. yeah. So, so tell our audience the, the kind of art that you create. The work that I create is uh, right now is old aging walls and they they look like sculptural pieces, but uh, the conversation that I've always wanted to create is about memories and how we perceive time. Um, and it's by reflecting on an objects in a in reality, and what better way to translate that than an aging wall? It documents from Mother Nature to the human touch to political to cultural. Everywhere we go, it reverberates time, and that's how we know time to exist because you can't see it directly. Like air, it's the effects it has on objects in space. So it's how I use my language to bring a deeper conversation. Hmm. Huh. Aging walls. So how do you go about creating that? Ooh, um, layering and layering over and over in time and uh, then deconstructing the layers to pull back uh, mm. those different layers of colors that happen to a normal aging wall and then document words and writings from either music or just what's going on in the moment or mark making across it to, uh, to stain the wall and create a memory and something that we reflect on. What, what got you into art in the, first, in the first place? Tell us a little bit about your backstory, how you grew up, oh, and what drew you to this medium. I, you know, it was a, a lot of self-discovery. Um, as a kid, my mother was a faux painter and designer, so I always grew up with tons of mediums and, mm -hmm. and ways of painting, and she said, do whatever you want. You can be anything you want. And uh, I always took that very seriously. And, and uh, in the beginning, it was just a hobby when I was about 12 and doing some murals. and. Uh, I really was trying to follow the business aspect, an entrepreneur like my dad. And later on, as I was going that direction and doing art kind of um, on, the, on the side or just for fun, I started to realize how much that could be uh, my language, how much I reflected and found myself through my art and understood the world. Um, and it wasn't until in college that uh, I realized going through the entrepreneur you know, area program at the Bauer Business School at U of H that um, I realized art is where I needed to put my focus um, and really find my language and my voice and it was something that I knew was the best foundation for me to start on. On your website you you talk about your purpose and humanity and it was that conversation that we had just very briefly when we met a few days ago that was our connection mm -hmm. so talk to our audience about your purpose and what it is that you think your art and art in general brings to humanity yeah so it was a long road in my 20s painting and trying to find myself, trying to find that voice. I was always searching for something, and my art was the way for me to investigate, um, psychoanalyze myself, um, even when I wasn't realizing it. Um, and there was at a point uh, that I came to the seventh series of mine, and I ended that, and I was like, what's next? I feel like I've, I've hit a peak of change. And um, at that point, I sat in a coffee shop, and I was just so much was going on in my life, but there was something that had changed. And um, I started to write a book. And I wrote this book uh, many years ago, and I saw this scientific model. It was just the clearest thing I could ever see in my life. And for some reason, I could translate it. And I didn't understand it completely, but I just had to document it. And then I had to document the whole story and how I got there. And in that process, um, I really started to find what it was all about. 
um, it was beyond art. It was beyond all this. It was about higher purpose, you know, finding purpose, what the artist is meant to do, and that's to build the building blocks for humanity to collectively climb. We're there to translate uh, something deeper about ourselves um, and how it connects to humanity. And that's when I really found something bigger than my art, bigger than myself. Um, and that was when I published a book and been working on living that that concept. And I call it one ton goldfish, you know, um, never change who you are, but always be heard. And living never, to your highest purpose. Never change who you are, but always be heard. Mm -hmm. I love that. It, it was this idea, I had it as a t-shirt company when I was 20 and I always trying to start businesses when I was young. and. And it, um, I learned the hard way about, you know, uh, business. It takes a dollar to make a penny, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you learn so much, but, uh, but I kept the name and I knew the name was going to be important. Mm -hmm. And, um, it wasn't until I finished the book and I realized my purpose. Um, and one ton goldfish was that, uh, higher purpose in self, mm -hmm. um, to reach out and be bigger, be your own reflection of the hero that you want to be, and not looking out for um, someone else to define you, but to define yourself. When you look at at, at the art that you create and and art in general, um, as it exists within the greater society and where we are as a country right now, with so much division and so much animus and uh, um, contention. Uh, what what do you think art can do to bring us together? What what is what is it about art that can reflect our common humanity? I think art. I feel very strongly about it's it's the ode to the artist to put these concepts out there for us to reflect on what it means to the individual and for self. And the way it does that is it brings that conversation to the table. It makes you engage in something much deeper. Um, art can be so abstract. It seems like elements from all over that don't seem connected, but mm -hmm. um, it's the language of the artist to bring it to the table and to translate that so we can see the abstraction in a very clear understanding of how it relates to us. Um, and it, it, it's a lot about bringing people to ask a question of why, right? Um, if someone paints a rock, I've seen a rock a million times, but if the artist can put that rock at a slight angle or in a context that we haven't ever thought of before, then it makes us question something we've seen a million times. And if that allows us to think something different or look at something at a different angle. That's what it's all about. It's helping us grow beyond the box in which we exist. I want to take a moment to welcome our newest sponsor, BMW of West Houston. Full disclosure, I'm a customer and have been for the last several years. I switched from another brand, which shall remain nameless, and I've never looked back. From the sedans to the SUVs, BMW of West Houston will put you in the ultimate driving machine of your dreams. The X5 and the X7, they're both on my wish list for when this podcast hits a million listeners. So please, share a Away, share away. A girl can dream. Check out this month's deals at bmwwest.com. Can you think of any conversations that you've had with, with people who have um, come to look at some of your art and um, have just sort of opened your eyes in a way that, uh, or, or viewed your art in a way that you did not expect them to view it? I mean, do you understand what I'm asking? Mm hmm. Yes. I'm not asking it very well, but no, I'm glad you no. understand. Yes. Um, <laughs> there's been many times. Um, one of my series was a lot of uh, psychological uh, studies of the viewer when I left nothing on the canvas other than color, shape, depth, and, and, uh, and form, and it was just random shapes. Um, what does the viewer attach to? And it helped me understand them um, as well as understand how they were viewing me and, and the connection between the two. Mm -hmm. um, but for a more um, uh, point blank kind of way of looking at it, um, my aging walls are fragmented shapes. They're on canvas, but I hand carve them and then uh, stiffen them up so then float them off the wall. And the shapes themselves were never meant to be um, seen as anything other than just random shapes. Um, but what I've seen is when people look at these aging walls, they like, oh, that reminds me of this country or that state because of the shape itself. Mm -hmm. So it's fascinating because I've never looked at um, 
I've never looked at them as representing shapes of actual um, um, continents or things. Um, I've just used them as uh, organic. So it's fast. When I see that now, I look at all these shapes. I'm like, okay, what does that remind me of uh, continent wise? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it helped me understand how people were walking into the work and, um, and reflecting, okay, what does that say about me and as an artist? And that's important. We, we have to hear the voices of what's being, um, how they're viewing it and look within ourselves to find like, okay, what, what am I expressing or am I healing that unconsciously I don't even realize I'm putting on the canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a great teacher once go through tons of photos of hers, of paintings um, for years. And then she went back and then explained what she was going through at each of those moments. Mm. And she had to reflect on why these shapes were sharper, colors were red, you know, what was going on in her life at right. that point versus this point. Right. And she didn't even know. She had to analyze her own work to get to that. And you went moment. through some of that yourself. I know you, you talk a little bit about that um, mm -hmm. in your books and, and your website. So can you share with us um, what you've been through in your personal life that mm. um, maybe was a time when when you felt disconnected or you felt like you were the other mm. and how you dealt with that situation? There are quite a few times, and especially early on, um, in the beginning of my career as an artist. You know, you, you've... Um, you get a lot of pressure in, you know, going in certain directions. And that's why I really was in the business school and, and but um, finding my voice and then leaving the business school and, you know, and making big leaps of faith in areas that, um, you know, leaving my normal job. And, you know, I painted in a boating storage unit and pretty much lived in there for, um, for about two years to paint my first series and saved up all my money I could on the act of faith that this was supposed to be my direction. And, you know, it was very isolating and it was very scary um, to make that leap in a faith of, of what I believed I needed to do or really didn't have an option. It was like calling me and um, that was really scary. Um, but um, I looked at it as a, you know, I questioned if I did not do this, if I did not go in this direction, um, would I regret it? Um, and that voice echoed a lot deeper than um, the fears that were hitting me both from society and the culture and, and um, you know, and the normalcy of everyone else um, and what they were doing compared to what I was trying to do. Um, writing a book, you know, <laughs> I've never, you know, I've never thought ever I'd be writing a book. Um, and doing it and having to isolate myself for months to write in a coffee shop every day and not paint, you know, there was a lot of, um, like, what's going on? What is he doing? And, and um, but I just, there was a calling. There's a, you just know um, that it's your path and, and you kind of have to silence all the outside world and do what you know is right at the time. Um, That's such a valuable lesson for, for young people to hear mm -hmm. um, because so often, they're um, told things that they can't do mm -hmm. or that you're not this, you're that. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't really know how to respond to that. And it's so powerful, I think, to hear, hear you, you talk about following what you describe as your calling. Mm -hmm. You know, am I going to regret not doing this at some point in my life? Um, what did you learn from those experiences that um, that sh help you show up the way that you do now in the world today? Not only as a as an artist, but as a human being. It makes you resilient. Um, it it tests you to a core of you know. Um, if I had nothing else, I have that, and that is a measure of you know who I am and, and where I can grow from. I mean, I remember sitting in that boating storage unit and it was like, if I'm willing to do this and sacrifice all this, then I must really want it. And, uh, and you really sometimes have to push yourself to a limit to really know your own self and what you are capable of. Um, but it just, for me, it just goes back to, um, 
the idea of never change who you are but always be heard. You know, it's this idea of a greater self and leading with purpose. Because um, I don't feel like we're very, I don't feel like we're, you're really living if you don't have a, a purpose that you're really guided to, to be a part of. Um, you know, and if you just and measure that way. I think that's so important because I think that when, when we feel that we do not have a purpose and we are disconnected from the greater mm-hmm. world, the greater society, that we're constantly looking for something. And, and if we don't find it or we're not able to find it, we then project that negativity mm-hmm. onto others. Yes. And so that lack of connection, that lack of purpose, um, it, to my way of thinking, is is really at the crux of yes. a lot of the the anxiety and the animus and the 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 othering that that we do to each other. Mm-hmm. Would, would you agree with that? I do. I do. And it's so easy to get lost in it. It's so easy to get sidetracked. I mean, we're so busy every day and just little by little words and things around us just affect us in ways that we don't realize it. And the next thing we know, like, oh my gosh, I'm being negative or I'm this, you know, mm-hmm. you, it really depends, you know, you have to have that core and sometimes you have to keep testing it. You know, it's you know, no matter how insignificant you may feel, mm-hmm. you know, um, your words, your purpose, your actions that carry weight. And right. just always checking in with yourself is what I would tell um, anybody that I even do all that have to all the time because you're always out. And, and But um, yes, that is, yeah, I agree. Mm. Yeah. And I was just picturing um, two different people looking at your installation, the floating, um, the, the wall, the mm-hmm. aging wall. And, and each one seeing something completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm picturing two people from different political points of view, different ethnicities, different races, having a completely different, um, I guess, perspective that they bring to mm-hmm. that moment in time, looking at the same piece of art and finding something in that piece of art that is common to each of them. Yeah. To me, that's one of the, the beautiful things about about art and its ability to bring us together. Oh, it's 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 what it's meant there for. Right. It's what we, you know, the the work itself will ebb and flow and fade in time. But the intangible idea the artist leaves behind it, that connectivity that humanity finds within it, um, no matter how distant the the two people viewing it, that's what we're searching for. That's what it's translating. That can last forever. And so it's important for the artist to leave that or to investigate those deeper meanings. Um, but it's also important to put it out there for, you know, connecting humanity when they find something different. And that's what I love about observing people, observing art. Um, is that they'll come at it from different angles, but it says so much about them as individuals, Mm -hmm. about their personal experience or cultural experience. But yet within that, you find the connectivity of like, wow, well, what is the link to it? Um, Just like every conversation, you're always trying to find some connectivity to who you're you're talking with and and relate to and understand um, on a deeper level. And uh, art just has that ability that is so abstract and can pull so many different things uh, psychologically that we're not even aware of Mm -hmm. out into the open Mm -hmm. uh, and connect us on a deeper level. So what's what's next for you? Your your purpose, your your desire to use your your art and your talent to um, elevate humanity. What what's next? Wow, there's um. There's quite a bit. Um, I'm really now just um, collecting everything from my art. I'm into the message of one ton goldfish, into making that my passion and my higher purpose to really uh, push that out there and be a voice and an advocate, um, both on the the importance of art in our culture and our nature, um, to have that respect for the artist. Um, and what they go through for humanity, but also the voice of humanity itself and connecting us. Because right now, it, you know, it's always needed so much um, for us to take away all the distraction and bring us back to a whole again. Um, and I want to be a part of that. 
I want to use what I've learned and what I've done and what I can do. Um, and my art is my vehicle and able to do that, but um, my voice and my message is the one thing goldfish, the finding purpose. And so um, doing a lot of uh, nonprofit work, um, going into the community, speaking and lecturing on that, both um, in schools and uh, and outside, and kind of using my art as the uh, the foundation for it. But um, I am the happiest when I'm speaking. Like as you know, and we connected, it felt so good. It's like okay, someone's uh, there with me on this. Um, that's what feeds my soul. That's what makes me so grateful and happy. And if I can do that and use my talent um, to support that, then you know that what better life um, for me uh, that I enjoy doing. I like, almost get teary-eyed because it's just <laughs> finding that is a, yeah, as you're a tough balance. Chills. Yeah. You're, you know, when you talk about feeding your soul, so having conversations like this is what feeds my soul. Yes. That's why I, I launched the podcast. It's the journalist in me. It's the storyteller in me. And, and just, you know, that's what feeds my soul. And it's so... Um, it's so beautiful and so obvious to me that you are living the life that you are meant to live and sharing um, your God-given gifts and talents and your intellect and your ability to, uh, to share that, particularly with young people. I'm so happy to hear you saying that you're, you're in the schools and you're sharing yourself and your art with them. I think that's phenomenal. Thank you. Well, Houston is, is, you know, the awareness of art at a grassroots level is in the appreciation of it and growing is um, not just about the arts as much as it is about ourselves creating and taking control of what we can create instead of allowing the outside world telling us what you should and shouldn't do or how you should do it or you you know you're part of this group or that group and if you're not then you're shunned out like giving the power back to kids at that age and allowing it to grow to the next generation allows them to not let the outside world affect their views and what they want to do and how to do it we need the, them to take over in the positive way and move humanity in in the correct way. Um, I know art, so that's the language that I use, um, but everybody has their own, but we're all saying the same thing and pushing. So it's it's connecting all those people and I feel Houston is on the precipice of, I mean, we have, Houston's amazing, I've lived here my whole life and I know it can be a Mecca for so much, for space, for the new frontier of everything is, is for me is, is here. Um, and so yeah, like, I get so, I get so excited, uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, the, the kids are really important um, because that's the grassroots. That's the seed that can last and, and start now. Um, and yeah, wonderful, wonderful, Justin. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show and to get Thank to know you. you a little bit. And I feel like I have a new friend in you. Yes. And, and um, I'm going to champion you and your art and your cause and. Um, I'm, I'm here for you, my friend. Thank you. I <laughs> just want you to you. know that. I Thank you. so appreciate what you're doing. And, uh, and I, I know that uh, you, you're going to continue to have a, a tremendous Thank impact on, on elevating humanity and moving Thank us you. in the direction that we need to go. And the same, like anything you need. Like it's so <laughs> heartwarming. I mean, I can't tell you how important that, that was meeting you and having that conversation in the middle of all the chaos that was going on. It was, it's, it reminds you like, okay, that's... That's my direction. We connect it. It's yes. all about connection. It is. All right. It Justin is. Garcia, right. thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank all of you for giving Justin permission to speak and for having the courage to listen with an open mind. We'll see you next time.